Hello. Welcome to the first episode of the Nitty Gritty Podcast. Give me one moment as I do this. Sorry, my window was in the way. <sighs> okay, so this is the first episode of the Nitty Digit Nitty Nitty Digit Podcast. So excuse me while I uh, have some bumps because again, this is the first. This is the first episode, and I'm getting used to new software and the fact that I just spent five times trying to record it on another software that ended up not having an actual file. So, the, it was an hour long. We're going to try not to do that. <laughs> so, I'm ranting without telling you my name. Ah, my name is Jay, and I am a knitter and a avid nail painting lover. Um, that's a recent one. Um, the knitting is not. I have been knitting since I was 12 years old. I've been not, I have been obsessed with nails for only three. So knitting will be probably more, um, precedent than my nails. But I wanted, the reason why I'm doing this podcast is so that I can merge the two and I don't have to choose between knitting or nails. Nails or knitting. So... This is why it's around. Um, to give you a background, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I'm born and raised here. And while I'm not having terrible choices between nail polish or yarn, I'm working at a law firm, a small commercial litigation boutique. Um, but my dream is one day to uh, be a librarian. So that that's my dream. So, another part of this podcast will be books. Um, just general. That's it. So, the format of the podcast will be to show my knitting, because of course I need to talk about my knitting, and also what's what's going on in the nail world for me. Um, and then, just random other stuff. Uh, I've been wanting to do a podcast for a while now, um, and actually I'm still trying to get an audio podcast going with a couple of my friends, just a, just a knitting podcast called The Graf Crafty Geeks, um, but I decided to also do a video podcast that consists of more of the na more of my personality than just a combination, um, so I, I also wanted to do nails, which is not something my, ga my friends want to talk about. So I figured I can do both. So let me start with what I'm knitting and get to know me a little bit more through my knitting. So I used to be a monogamous knitter and if I was a monogamous knitter this section would be short but I'm not. <laughs> I just got I just got too impatient and wanted to do more stuff. Um, more socks especially. I'm starting to get more into shawls um, but I've been mainly a sock knitter for a while. And because of the economy, because of the economy of it, you could, you only have to buy one or two skeins, while with sweaters you tend to have to buy a lot more, as I tangle my yarn. And you know, also it's just, there's a lot more sock yarns, a lot more sock yarns fit my wants. So that is why there's going to be a lot of socks that I'm going to show you. So the first sock is the Valai from the Sock Innovation the Sock Innovation book by Cookie A. Um, let me actually show you the book first. Let me see. Actually, it is much better. Ah, here you go. And the pattern is called Valai. V V I L A I. Um, I I think I'm saying it right. Um, let's see. Oh, I went too far. Ah, here you go. Um, so here it is. Um, here you go. Okay. There you go. And, um, I don't know if... I think someone gifted me this book. And I've been knitting a lot out of it. I love look Cookie A's. So I've been doing this sock. And this is actually the second pair. Um, if you can see... Oh, yeah. Here you go. Mm -hmm. It's a cable pattern. Oh, what was it doing? 
it's a cable pattern. So it actually eats, it ate up a lot of my yarn the second, the first one, and I'll, I'll show you. So you see I'm halfway through the leg, and I only have this much yarn. So, um, which normally blue, uh, so excuse me, sorry, backtrack. This is in Blue Moon Fiber Arts Socks That Rock Lightweight um, US 1s in my Haya Haya's uh, lace, their, their lace needles. Um, I used to, ha I knit the first one in, um, in my signature US 1 needles, but they broke. Very sad. Very sad. They broke. Um, and I'm on the waiting list for another one. So, but it was, it was very nice. They, they just asked me to bring pictures and to show that I broke them. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't break them. Well, I don't know. They just broke, and I was very sad. <laughs> it was actually when I was about to finish the toe that it broke. So, I was very sad. So, let me put this, I should have been more, after five times, you would think that I would be more, uh, more, uh, oops. more ready to do this, right? I did this, what, five times? Well, technically, I only did it once, but I tried five times to get this video to go. See, me and technology are are, are not good friends. We're, 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 we're acquaintances. So I try, and I try, and I try, and I try to work with her, and, you know, I don't know why I call technology or her, but... You know why? I put it on backwards. As I said, I've done this five times. It's getting late in the night, and the the one that finally succeeded in me not saying, ooh, I don't like it, was an hour and 19 minutes long, and, um... Uh, <laughs> I'm really hoping this is not going to be an hour and nine minutes long. I'll be less rambly. Um, so here you go. Here it is on the sock blocker. It's very pretty. I really like it. Um, but as you can tell, the leg is really long. Um, and I did a short row heel to, to try to ease the yarn bloodage. So, and, but, you know, I figured, oh, well, I have a short foot, you know. But the leg takes up most of it. So, and then there's cables right, right around here, like on the top of the foot. You can see. Yeah. So, cables eat it up. So, that's why I had to order another another skate. And it, it actually turns out that um, the colorway, which is titanium, um, is actually color, is a club yarn. So, um, that's where I lost. So, I, I, it was very hard to find it. So I was able to find one, which I'll show you quickly, right now, it's right behind me, see, socks at rock, right here, titanium, ooh, wrong way, there you go, I haven't wound it yet, I'm waiting, so my next, oh, and sorry, zigzag stitches, bags, one of my favorites, um, I, I, I'm kind of very into box, boxy pat, um, knit bag, knitting project bags lately. Don't know why, I just am. Second is also from the Socks Innovation Cookie A book. Um, it's called The Devon. That I have no problem pronouncing. Um, it's also done in Blue Moon Fiber Arts, uh, Socks That Rock, in The Knitters Without Borders. Um... And this one, I, you can't really see, all right, making sure it's not upside down. It, the colors, the colors are very pretty. It also, the black bleeds onto my nails and, and fingers, so that was a little contention a little. And it doesn't really show the pattern as well, but I still like it. I still really like it because it's just, it's so... It's so pretty. It, I don't know. I, I like how it how it went with the toe. You see, 
And then I just, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not a type of person that needs to see the pattern as much. I mean, you can see it, but it's not apparent. So, I don't know why I keep doing that, but I like it. I, I like it a lot, so. So this is the first sock. Um, and let me show you. I am already done with the cuff and leg. I'm at the heel, and now I'm just giving it a break while I'm doing the doing the valet, so I can get that to the heel, and then I'll start the heel on this. So as you can see, I'm I'm there. I'm I'm already done with the with the leg. Just need the heel and the foot and the toe. Um, and this is in my Addy Turbos one and a half. There are ones, but it's it's really one and a half. Um, I really love my Addy Turbos, just like I love my, my signatures. And actually, I find that I enjoy knitting with Addy Turbos one and a halves than the signature ones, only because with my hands, um, I don't mind knitting in small needles. It doesn't hurt my, my hands that much, but when you're doing cable lacy work in ones, it, it does tend to hurt after a while. So these, but these had a lot of... Of still had a lot of decreasing because it's the triangular so it's still it's still sometimes after a while your hands do kind of hurt and oh TARDIS um Doctor Who yes I am a Doctor Who fan um this is a bag my friend gave me for Christmas this year so um, and last project, I know it feels like I'm running through, or maybe I'm not running through, but I, I am running through because I'm trying not, I'm trying not to make this an hour, and I've already done this five times. This is not a good way to start a podcast, and I'm sorry, I don't be less grumpy, I just was just like, no, but, um, this is not a sock, I know, shocker. Um, I, I, as I said, I am doing more shawls, and this is, well, this is a scarf, actually, but you can, and a lot of my shawls are actually worn as scarves, I, I just kind of put it around my neck, but I like shawls better than scarves when it comes to neck, neck coverage, sorry, my needle popped with my hand, and, um, it just better coverage of the neck, so, because when you're, because I, I walk, to the train every morning for work and it, during the winter cold and even even during summer when it's still you know it's still kind of chilly morning cold i i like it feels good to be warm when you're walking so um anyway this is the back to scarf i don't i don't remember the author and i'm really sorry um but you can find it on ravelry and um this is done in Wolmiza. I'm actually glad with this video because you can see the colors better. Um, so here is the red. So it's a very beautiful red, and this is this is not the lacy bactus, which is another version of the bactus, but just the basic bactus. Um, and let me show you. So it's I'm more than halfway through because I have increased. So the the pattern called, it's basically garter stitch, and you just increase, and then when you're halfway halfway through the the yarn ball, which, sorry, the, the, the skein, this, your cake, um, you then start to decrease. So I'm at the decreases. So, here, you can see, I'm, I'm quarter of the way. So, um, it's, it's fun. This is, this is actually, I, I, this is my, on going to work or going home, travel, in line, impatientness <laughs> pattern. And I, so I usually do very simple, not something that I don't have to have the pattern with me all at all times so that way I'm just knitting I don't have to worry about it um, sorry I have an itch in my head so this is this is the yarn label hopefully it will there you go so merino it's the 100% merino superwash don't ask me to pronounce that 
It's German. I may be a quarter German, but I don't know it. And I'm not going to be rude and um, try to. So it's the Ross, Ross Spots and Womiza. Womiza. So I, I've become, just like with blue with the socks that rock, the STR, lightweight, I've become obsessed with Womiza. Um, so, sorry, my, anyway. So that, that's why, um, I, I become a collector of yarns in my, in my many years, and Wolmeiser has become my collector, my, my main collecting yarn. So, and I, so, I tend to get mine from the Loopy U, which I love the U, Loopy U, love it, um, not from the actual website because I have to go to bed early on weekdays and usually according according to Knittables she updates Thursday at like midnight or 1 a.m. in the morning I'm sleeping so I just have to catch the loop of you when I'm pretending to work <laughs> I do work thank you very much so um so that's that's what I'm knitting on um I'm I would I'm hoping in future that I'll be knitting more sweaters, but it's just, I need to knit through my stash first before I buy any more yarn or sweater quantities of yarn. So, <laughs> anyway, did I mention, um, I don't think I mentioned, I'm in my little room in little area of my bedroom. Um, I, I live in a one bedroom apartment. Um, and when I moved, when I was deciding where to live, I had to make sure I had room for my yarn. And I have yarn from there to here. So, <laughs> half filled. So, I have, I have some free cubbies. Like, they're, they're the usual. Um, maybe someday I'll show you. But I know it's not compared to other people. It's small, but it's it's a lot for a little me. So, and I don't. I only knit socks. I can only fit so many socks. So, I'll just start giving them away. I guess. So, anyway, now we are moving on to the nail portion, which again, I'm, it's going to be small because I'm. I'm not. I'm still getting into the nail. I guess what you call the nail community. So, um, to kind of give you a background about my, my nail, the nail obsession is, it started about three years ago when my sister decided to get married. She had me as a bridesmaid, and I, so, one of the, one of the things that the bridal party did was to get their nails done, you know, and I've got my nails done now and then I've got fit I had gotten fake nails I've done all that stuff but I I have and I have not had I have a problem with biting my nails it's kind of oral oral fixation type thing I, I I bite my nails when I'm nervous or when I'm bored that type of thing I also eat <laughs> it's so funny I stress eat I also stress eat so um but so when we were getting our our nails done, I had to get fake nails because my nails were too small. They were too short to do the French manicure that my sister really really wanted us to do. She wanted us to be simple and ha have French manicures. So um I went with the fake nails and um where were, no, it was, it was French manicure. Anyway, so, I ha the woman got, you know, did my nails, um, did the fake nails, and she, you know, I, on a whim, I said, could you make them shorter? Because the one thing I always had problems with fake nails were the fact that they were always so, they, they were longer than what I used to, and so it just always felt like I was Cruella de Vil with the, ah, pointy, and it's just, it never, I never liked the shape of it, I never liked the feel of it, and I just hated it, and I was just like, great, I'm gonna have to 
have fake nails. <sighs> so, but I don't know women said, could you make them shorter? So, she did. And she actually did it perfectly. And I'm just like, wow, I like this. I actually like having my nails done very nicely. And I like the fact that they that they're short they're sh to my length they're not too short they're not too long I love them so it started me going to nail salons trying out the ones in my area um, because my sister lives um, in Southern California I live up in the Northern California area and so I started going around in, in the sub in where I live um, and you know tried and eventually was doing the fake nails and someone told me oh it's better for your nails if you did the silk ones did the silk ones for a while still my, you know again if you're a nail biter you know your nails are just not in the perfect health they're thinned out they're just not good and they're short and they're scraggly and your cuticles are awful and so you know, but I kept putting fake nails on you know sanding and all that stuff and it was ruining it so an old friend of mine said, hey, I've heard of the shellac. Try it. Oh my god, you'll love it. Try it. Just trust me. Try it. I'm like, okay. Alright. I'll try it. I'll try it. It doesn't use fake nails, but it's thick. Like fake nails. So I'm like, okay. So we went to a one in, around closer, um, not somewhere in a different area, tried it, and it was perfect, it was actually wonderful, it was great, it stayed on, it was, it didn't chip like normal nail polish, but it didn't, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, you didn't have fake nails, it was your nail, but it was, it was great, um, so I kept doing that, and I didn't like the parlor that we started with, and I kept trying new places, and at the time, it was still very new, so I, you know, it was very hard to find a place. Now it's everywhere, and some are higher, some are lower. The best price you can get it at is twenty-five dollars, I think. Um, sometimes it used to be twenty, but now with how really popular they are, they're now twenty-five. So um, I st I started doing that, and I actually found a really good place very close to me um, that did it in the the woman, her name was Ree, and she was actually very amazing, and she knew a lot about nails. Like, she didn't just know about shellac and all that stuff. She knew nails. She knew how to make them healthy, and she saw my nails, and she's like, oh, mm, not good, not good. So, she she kind of helped me. I, I She really helped me with understanding my nail, understanding the health of it. But she also wanted me to come back, so she, you know, she did it in a way that was smart for her and smart for me. So I kept going to her, and for the last, and that was for the last year, year and a half, on and off, because I, you know, during that time I was getting my master's, and you know, I was doing part-time jobs, and it would always depend on the money that I had. You know, I, I never, you know, tried to go out of my way, unlike yarn. <laughs> That's another story. Um, so I, you know, off and on. And then finally, what got me started to getting more involved was I just, my nails still weren't healthy. They still weren't healthy. Even, even with the gel, even with the shellac, the gel, the gel polish and the shellac, if you do it right, if you want it right, you have to sand down your nails. And I already have the nails as it is. And so it was thinning them out to the point that they were just not healthy, not at all healthy. And so, and, you know, it was, it was still with, you know, and then, she, so to, sorry, to go back, she also started getting me hooked to nail art. And so, and she, she gave me a good, she, she would always, you know, slide me a good deal and say, don't worry, this is free. Well, it wasn't, um, but I was a good cust. I was always a good customer, and so she 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 she'd do some on the side, and she would always do amazing nail art. But even with all that, even with the even with the, that whole thing, it was just it was still a lot of money to put down every month, and with my nails, with the health, I just 
I decided to do what I called a little campaign called Liberate the Nails. I wanted to do it myself. Not the whole intense nail art, because some of, some of it I, I thought was really pretty, but just like, I don't, I want my nails simple. So, like some, like some of them I'll be like, yeah, that's so, fast. that would be so cool for a party. But not, not for every day, you know. And that was the thing, is a lot of it was just like every day go to work and it's like, you know, you're talking to an attorney and the attorney's like, what is that on your nails? Is that a snowman? <laughs> yeah, that was one of them. So, it was kind of like, I, I love her design and I think I would, I won't, I won't do the, the shellac, even though I, I love the thickness, I loved it all, I don't think I'll, I'll do the shellac again. I don't think I will, because it just, it sands down the nail, and it, my nail's not, my nail type is not good for that. That doesn't mean any other nail type is bad for that, it just means my, for my nail types, and how my nails are, it's not healthy for me. So... I'm not going to do that, but I'll, I'll, I'll go to her for special occasions and whatnot, so. Because I still love her, and I would recommend her. If you guys, you know, if you ever guys need a nail stylist and you live in the San Francisco Bay Area and you're willing to go to the suburbs, I'll tell you her name and number, and she, she's amazing. I'll give it to you. Um, so that, that is where it started, and then I'm, so... How I started was, I got, you know, I put the nail string there, all that stuff, but I, I kept thinking, well, what am I, how am I going to do the nail art? Like, what am I going to, what, what, how, I love, I, how, how am I going to educate myself? So, and I'll, I'll show a little bit of how I got educated, but so I started looking at nail blogs, and what got me started on merging my knitting and my nails was, there was a blog that, I don't remember the name, and I'm sorry, I'll, I'll put it in the show notes later. Um, she was a knitter, too, and she was a nail person, but I noticed all of it was nails and not enough knitting, because knitting is a little bit more time-consuming. Nails, it's like an hour, and you're done. Knitting, it's a little bit more time-consuming. Just like, I guess in the craft spectrum, it's nails, knitting, sewing. <laughs> Sewing, oh, sorry, no, 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 nail sewing, knitting. Sewing doesn't take that long. It's like putting together, which I don't, I don't, I guess I shouldn't say anything. I don't really sew, but I've seen it, and I'm a, I admire sewers. I'll shut up now. <laughs> so, um, it doesn't take that long. So I just like, wait a minute, I can merge both. And since the, the, so... The podcast that I originally wanted to do was with my friends, and we were going to do an audio podcast called The Crafty Geeks, um, and we were just going to talk about knitting and books and all that stuff, and, you know, we were all in three parts, so we couldn't, you know, we couldn't really do a video podcast, so we were going to do an audio podcast. Well, they're not into nails, and I am, and I, you know, and our schedules have been so up and down that we haven't really been able to put it out there because all the episodes we've we've recorded still need editing because obviously you have to edit me <laughs> you've got to edit me so i'm not editing me this is all me so um i decided to do this one as well as the other ones so that way um i can do the nail part and the nitty stuff so and not make my friends be bored out of their minds with, with the nail stuff. Because I just kept started, started talking and talking about them. And they're just like, I don't care. So now I get to vent to a camera about my nails. So this segment, long story short, is going to be what's on the nails. Because I don't spin. I don't sew. I just knit. And to add diversity other than, oh, look, I'm reading a book. I'm going to talk about what's on my nails. Um, just like with how with Karen, it's what's on the wheel and whatnot, it's what's on the nails. So, this week, because most, most paint jobs last about a week, if you, if you do a lot of precaution and whatnot, I, I've been able to get my nails to last me a week. Maybe a week and a half if I'm not doing a lot of paperwork and a lot of 
moving and whatnot, but it's just being really careful. I'm not dainty, but I'm not dainty, so it's it's a week. Maybe, um, you know, with small, with small wears and tears, but, um, and if I, there's this base coat that I used to use, it kind of died and I had to throw it away, and I'm still trying to strengthen my nails, so I'm, as a base coat, I'm using a nail straightener, but it's called, it's the C&D Sticky Base, and, um, it's, it's really good. It actually really does keep it on very well for a week with very little wear. Um, but I found the nail straight there's the same way. So um, while it, it's building health, that's what I'm that's what I'm using as a base coat. Um, so what I'm what I'm wearing is Rescue Beauty, um, Catherine. Um, let me show you the. See the lighting is much better in this episode. Hopefully you can kind of see the. It's like a dark purple with some very beautiful sheen. And let me show you my nails. If you can see it. Uh, I'll post pictures. Oh, why am I showing you the bad hand? That's my right hand, which is done by my left hand. And I also... Um, So I'm still getting used to the nail tools and whatnot. So, um, see, it's so pretty. You can't really see the dimensions. I wish my my camera would focus better. But um, so why I'm saying this is a bad hand, even though it actually doesn't look that bad, is this this nail. If you can kind of see, I dug a little too deep with my cuticle nipper. And you can kind of see it. It should blood. I'm still getting used to the tools and understanding my my threshold and digging too deep or going to. So, because I'm again, I've never done it at home, so I'm just getting used to it. So this is my nails. You can't really see it in the depth, so that's probably why a lot of people don't do a lot of video podcast video podcasts about nails. That they just do blogs with nail pictures. But you know, I. I I don't care. I'm going to do it. So, and this is, again, here's the bottle. Rescue Beauty. Um, I love it. Catherine. This is, so Rescue Beauty, it's Rescue Beauty Lounge. Come on, focus. You're not going to focus, are you? Okay. Sorry. I have a sucky web camera. Um, this is part of, so the Res Rescue Beauty Lounge is from New York City, um, and it's a, a lot, it's very, it's a, according to the book that I'm reading that I'm going to show you in a few minutes, it's, it's a very different, it's supposed to be a very spa related, you're not, it's not a rush and go, it's relax, you go in and it's like a spa treatment, you have your own room, that's sort, uh, supposedly, you have your own room. And, you know, you get your nails done in peace. Um, and so, it, and so they also sell, sell nail polish without those three chemicals. So it's non-three. It's three, three free. Three free. And, um, it's, I, I do have to say I like it. Um, like, I, I really, I'm, the geek in me just squeed when this line came out. It's the, it's the wives of, the wives of Henry, Henry VIII. So this is Catherine of Aragon. I also have Anne, Anne of Anne Boleyn and Jane. Um, they're really pretty and I'll be wearing those eventually. Um, the, the color is gorgeous. It, the depth, I love it. Um, but I got this when these were a little less expensive. They're now being... A lot, all of her nail polishes are being, um, sold for $18, which, for what you're getting, it's, a, it, it's good, but the cheap person in me is like, ugh, $18 for one nail polish, I can't do it, <laughs> I can't do it, so I, 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 it's very rare when I get these. It's it's very rare. It's like, ah, oh, I had 
a job promotion or a raise, you know, those type of things is when I'm like, I deserve, I deserve a rescue beauty. And, you know, honestly, with their darker colors, it does, you have to be very careful with her dark, dark colors, even though I know dark colors are supposed to be harder to put on because it is, I, I'm trying to remember why, but it's just, you know, you can see more of your mistakes and, and whatnot, but so, it's just, but it, when you're trying to do thin layers as you're supposed to do, it just, it, 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 it's harder. It just doesn't, the, the feel of it doesn't, it gets goopy. I don't know how to, how to describe it, but it does get goopy. You can only do thick, thick layers or just deal with the goop and let the layers sort out when you do the top coat. So, and I, and that's what I actually found. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, that's what I found is I, with the, with the thin layers, I I, I did two coats. Um, the nail string there as my base. I also did a pre, pre-base coat, the kind that helps you with the, so that it gets all the oils out of, out of your nail, so that it's dull and all that stuff. And then did the, did the nail string, the natural, the OPI, the OPI natural nail straightener as the base so that my nails can get better. And then two coats of this, of this, um, and then, um, two coats of the top coat, which some bloggers were doing, and I really liked the look of it, and I, and I was reading one article online, I think it was L.com, where they said putting two top coats actually helps the manicure last much longer, so I'm, and chip less, so this is my experiment this week to see if that's true. I also like it, and I, I use Seche Vite, S-E-C-H-E-V-I-T-E, -E, I believe, um, as a top coat for both, for both coats, um, so, so I, I, I would recommend it, but not, if you're trying to do things on a budget, it's not, it's not that. Um, and I, so, another thing I wanted to show you is, it's related to Rescue Beauty. So, sh the owner of Rescue Beauty wrote this book. So, res Rescue Your Nails, Rescue Beauty. Her name is G, so G by I, I'm really sorry. I don't know. How, I'm really sorry. You would think I would know how to say your name. G bike, back. Um, and she's she's amazing. She I've read some of her blog and and her this book was actually pretty funny. And she's the book is actually really good. And so she this book has been helping me liberate my nails. Um, I actually used this when I was doing my nails last night. Um, it teaches you how to do it at home, you know, and what to do if you do to go somewhere else, like what you watch for, what, you know, all the questions that people have in regards to getting your nails done somewhere else. And But also, what I really liked about this book is that it has something for me. Because again, as I said, I bite my nails. And the only reason how I'm able to not bite my nails, and you can see my nails are short, but they're, again, they're, um, they're regrowing and they're, and they're, they're working to be, to be stronger. But she has this. So she, she's also known to helping those who bite their nails. So I love this. This is actually why I bought it. I'm like, ooh. I must find out what she, what her tips are, because I've tried everything. I've tried those, those nail polishes that they have that, that makes, that says disgusting taste so you don't bite your nails. Yeah, you end up liking, liking the taste. Like, at first you're just, ugh, vinegar, ugh, vinegar, ugh, 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 and, but the stress in you and everything else, you find that you just keep doing it and you're just like, I don't care. You just wash your, you just go and drink some water and it goes away. So it didn't work for me. Because apparently I like to find ways to get around the things that I put in my way. 
<laughs> I like to jump hurdles <laughs> to get to what I want to do, which is bad for the bad habits. So I wanted to see her tips, and her tips are actually really good. Really, really good. I I really like her suggestions about of what to do, and it helped. It actually has helped me. So um, I, I would recommend this book, especially for those who really just, they want to stop biting their nails, or they just want to do, what, just, they really want to do things at home, and they just, you know, she, they, you want to save money, and you want to <sighs> liberate your nails. This is the best book. Um, and also, so, th the last, I guess I have three reasons of, two reasons, actually, of why I wanted to do a podcast a little bit about nails is because I've noticed a lot of the nail bloggers, not at all if I'm, if I'm trying to offend anyone, but their nails are long, which is great. It shows, ooh, pretty, you know, it shows better with long nails, the nail art and everything like that. But what about those who have short nails? Like, does that mean, like, short, short nails? Like, these are too, to me, these are too short. They're stubby. Like, I, I would like it a little bit longer, but you don't see that. You do not see that. You see the long, long nails. And I'm just like, well, what about those who like normal short nails? Like, you know, because you can't have long nails, because you work at, you, like me, you're a Sherpa. <laughs> And you have to carry boxes, and you have to carry, you know, binders, and you have to do all that stuff. Nails don't last that long, long. They die. I work with my nails. I, I knit with my, with my hands. I'm not going to be able to knit if my ne nails keep hitting each other, right? I don't, well, that's probably me. But... It's my personal preference, but I figured, what if there's another person out there that's like, I can't really be into nails because my nails are short. Well, guess what? You can. Because this book also, also told me I can. Because she shows, and this was actually a com in a review that was one of the complaints that they had, was that the nails, if I could find a picture, were... too short. And it's like, but, let's see. That's normal length for me. I like that. That's a nice normal length. But you see all these bloggers, which are amazing, and I would not dig them at all, but they have much longer nails much longer nails. It's like, with the with the nail art, I can understand, but Re, my gal, was always able to still put art on the on the nail that I wanted. Like, the, again, I said, these are too short. I just, I, I'm trying to rebuild some of them again. So, um, she was still able to do it. So, I, I, I wanted to show that you can still do it. And I think this book is just, was the catalyst. Like, dude, we have to work, some people have to work with our hands, and we can still do it, so, anyway, this is, I, I suggest you go out and get this book, because it's amazing, and you're allowed to have short nails, there you go, um, uh, so, that's about it, I did want to mention, for the knitting stuff, that there are two, events for me that are coming up that I'm going to be doing for knitting. And they're both stitches. Um, so there is a company called Knitters Universe and um, XRX. They put on shows and they do four, it's four events around the area and they're called Stitches. And there's a Stitches West, there's a Stitches Midwest, a Stitches North England, New England or New Hampshire, that area. Stitches North, I believe, and then Stitches South. I'll be doing Stitches West and Stitches South. Stitches West is coming up next week, next weekend, February 23rd, um, from, well, okay, that's when I'm going. It's, it's from the Thursday through the Sunday, 
of next weekend. And um, I'm very excited. <laughs> and then I'll be doing Sister South, which is um, April 13th. Sorry, the 15th is a Monday, so 14, 13, 12. April 11th through um, April 14th. Yes, I, I can't count in my head. Sorry. Um, I'll be doing both of those. Um, and But let me touch first on Stitches West. I'm very excited. If you've ever done a Stitches West, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I say, oh my god. <laughs> it's exciting. Um, and the thing to note about these events is they're they're not the same. They are the same, but they they're not at the same time. They're very different for each locale. Um, and they and like Stitches South is that has actually only been going around for about five years, five or six years. I I I can't point down the time, but it's about five years. While Stitches West has been doing it much longer, much, much longer. I don't know how long, but it, it's been more than five years. And so Stitches West has a lot a lot more vendors because they have a bigger space and they it's just they're also covering a lot of ground. Um because Stitches West covers all you know, all of California, which is big. <laughs> You may think California is all the same. It's not. We're not. We're all not the same because, of course, we're we're humans. We're all different. But it's just. It's very different. California is very diverse and very different, and it's hard to explain unless you travel it. Um, and then it's Oregon, Washington, um, Idaho, Idaho, <laughs> Idaho, Nevada. Arizona, New Mexico, that, that, the West. While Stitches West, I think, is, you know, the South. And, but it's, so Stitches South is smaller, less vendors. So it's more community oriented. Like, I feel more homey and more out there to hang out with my friends more and more willing to do classes there than I am with Stitches West, West because it's just, it's a huge, it's, it's a lot more people. And it's a lot, more space so it's when you're going in it's not just like one big area it's two so two huge halls filled with yarn yes with yarn so it's it's big so it's just a it's very different and it's you know, when when you do your first stitches, I have three rules that I always tell people. And I want to tell you guys about that. Just you always have to keep in mind about Stitches West is it's big and you will feel overwhelmed. But if you follow the three rules, you'll have fun. Um, so let me... So, yeah. Um... I'll tell you the three rules, but I do want to say that it's very odd this year with Stitches West, because usually by now, a week before, I have a plan of attack. I don't have that this year, because I've, well, one, I've been focusing more on Stitches South, and I've decided to make that more of a, a week-long vacation, since, you know, if I'm going to go three time zones, I'm going to go enjoy it. Um... And also because I'm not going to be going in with as much money as I did, as I, as I have the past few years. So I'm, I'm limiting myself to only two skeins of yarn and a pattern, which is very odd <laughs> because I'm usually home with like a big bag <laughs> and horror stories of how, you know, I tried to hide the credit card, but it somehow found me. <laughs> but this year I have to be a little bit more um, thrifty with my yarn purchases because one, I don't have much room, and two, I you know, well, and two, I'm going to another one in <laughs> about a month after. But also because I, I'm trying to save for some things and a more, more important things. So and. You know, it's just, it's better. It's better that I learn restraint. That I found that 
la well, last year especially, I did not have. <laughs> I To give you an example, I signed up for eight yarn clubs last year. Eight! Eight! Why did I think eight? Like, some of them were three months. So it was, you know, it was fine. It was three months and three months of yarn, and then yay! But I kept adding more. So, um, again, limited space. And, well, at the time I didn't have unlimited space because I, I was living with my parents and I moved out to my own one bedroom apartment. And now I realize, oh, where? I can't hide things anymore that I used to. Only one bedroom. I can't make my neighbors downstairs hide my yarn, right? So, I have to knit what I have. So, and a lot of the vendors I've bought so much yarn from, as such as, a lot of vendors at Stitches West, I've bought so much yarn, but I haven't bought, I haven't knit any. I have to knit them, right? That's the reason why I buy them, right? It's not just to make them look pretty in my, in my room, right? They're not decoration. Well, maybe. <laughs> like, I pointed, like, here. Lisa Souza. I love you, Lisa Souza, but I can't buy anymore because I already have two cubby holes worth of yarn that I have not knit out of you. Look pretty, right? Beautiful Lisa Souza. BFL sock. Pretty, right? Oh my god, so pretty. There's so much more yarn that I can knit, and there's a lot more dyers that I need to try. I mean, another example. Here, I'm reaching backwards. Socks that rock. I'm already knitting two pairs of socks out of Socks and Rock, and I have more. Two cup, no. No, two cubby holes worth of Socks and Rock. We're done. We're done. We need to do, we need to do other people, so... Two skeins of yarn, one pattern, and I do want to, I think I'm going to buy one pattern from Blue Moon, because I love Blue Moon, so, or maybe one from Lisa, I don't know, but look, he he he, I like the name, oh, you can't see it, there you go, Muddy Autumn Rainbow, he, <laughs> I like rainbows, so, and I'm going with, so, Oh, and I'm going with, um, my knitting gals, um, so, which are two people, we used to be bigger, um, but a lot of my gals moved away, <coughs> Listy, <coughs> <laughs> and, um, for good reasons, for very good reasons, um, I'm still bitter. What can I say? <laughs> Not really. Um, so it's just the two of us. Madame Lederhosen and um, another friend of mine. Which, I, I'm i not going to say her name out of privacy. Um, and we're going to go and have fun. And hopefully, we will be smart. And not buy too much yarn. Or we will just be awful to each other and make us buy more yarn. I don't know. We'll see. It's fun. I love it. And, um, but, uh, this is probably my fifth year doing it. So, but I'm not very good with numbers, if you can tell. I know knitting math. As one boss of mine used to say, calculators were invented for you. So, <laughs> Um, so let me get down to the rules I talked about. Now, if this is your first Stitches West, I really, really want you to take these rule to, rules to heart as someone who has suffered through it, who has done it, okay? I have done it, and I've done it to two Stitches, okay? Not just Stitches West multiple times, Stitches South multiple times. So, the first, the, the first rule, hide your credit card. I do not know how how much I need to tell you. Hide your credit card or even leave it at home. Get a new wallet. Not not a new wallet, but like grab an old wallet that doesn't carry that much. 
only put your ID and your cash because trust me you don't want to bring your credit card because you're going into a humongous humongous area filled with yarn now if you remember the first time you went to your local yarn store, your LYS, do you remember? Just remember, think, think back to when you went to your first ever local yarn store. Not Michael's, but your first local yarn store. Are you remembering? Times that by 1,000, 10,000 times, and you got Stitches West. So, when, when, you, when you get that feeling, don't, don't you get the, what you call yarn fumes and you just want to buy everything? Well, you're going to buy everything in that whole entire two-haul, two-haul convention center. So, even though right now you're rational and you're like, nah, I'm fine, I'm fine, it, it, I'm very good with my credit card spending. I'm very good. I'm not willy-nilly. I, I, I use it wisely. You're not going to use it wisely at Stitches West. I'm telling you. You're not. You are not. So hide that credit card. Hide it not in the wallet that you're going to take into the convention center. Hide it in your home. I am telling you. Somewhere where you cannot reach it. When the yarn fumes are in your nose and you're just like, there's yarn. I want it. I need it. There's no cash. There's a credit card, though. I trust you. Trust me. I did not believe it when, when, so I used to, for three months, I used to work at a yarn store in between the many, the many jobs that I've had. Um, and, you know, I, I'd never been to Stitches West, and I'm, I'm saying, oh, I'm going to go this year, oh, I'm going to go this year, and both the owner and the gals that were working with me and the and the gals that were sitting, you know, were just visiting, they're just like, hide your credit card. And I'm like, I don't have that much money. I work for you. You really think that I'm going to be able to use my credit card? No, I'm good with my credit card. I'm fine. I'll just take it for emergencies. Don't worry about it. $200 later. So the next year, I'm like, okay. Remember, remember when, you know, you had the credit card and you're just like, oh, I was smart, I was... Blah, blah. you got to hide it. So I hid it in my wallet. In the wallet that I took into the convention center. So, you know, when the yarn bruise was coming, I, you know, I thought, oh, well, I won't be able to find it. I'll be fine. I'll, I'll hide it. I'll hide it. I'll hide it. Somehow, in the yarn fumes, the yarn fumes gives you the power to find what you hide. Six hundred dollars later, <laughs> so that's when I finally took someone's advice and I said, "Okay, I'm gonna hide my credit card into in my house." So I never bring my credit card with me. I always bring my ID and enough money to get me through with yarn and with you know sometimes if I need to get food. So yeah. We, we, we don't, we don't, we don't bring, Jay doesn't bring her, uh, credit card to any stitches anymore, so, I, that's my number one rule, is don't, don't bring your credit card, hide it. The second one is, so going back to that feeling of the, of your LYS, of the feeling of going in the first time, and imagine it being t t 10,000 fold, you're gonna get overwhelmed. You are. You're going to get so overwhelmed. And it's just going to be like, oh my god, there's so much time. There's so much choices. What a... Holy crap. Take a breath. Take a breath. There's going to be women stampeding you. Like me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Me. And you're just going to get so overwhelmed. And you're going to get cranky people who don't like crowds of people. Like me. Again. And you're just... Just take a breath. Just take a breath. Calm down, take a breath, and just, you don't have to buy the first yarn you see. Even though if it, you know, if it's there and all that stuff, that's fine. It's fine. If you do a, 
do a one lap. With Citrus South, I do two laps. Well, actually, I did one last year, and then I gave up, and I <laughs> went for it. But I, do do a lap around Stitches West. Do two for South, because it's smaller. But just do a lap or, or so before you decide to buy yarn. And if it's still there, then it was meant to be. If it's not, then it wasn't, and they have online stores. I'm just saying. And if not, you can go to their store, and it's a nice little trip, you know? So it's, take a breath and do a lap, okay? Do a lap. That's all I'm saying. Which leads me to my third one. Third rule. Have fun. Have fun. This is yarn. This is your craft. This is knitting. People are surrounding you love knitting or crochet. I don't do crochet or spinning.